In this video, we're going to see if we can get this 2001 Gas Gas 300 running and rideable. I bought it about a month ago as part of a package deal. I don't know if it runs. Haven't done anything with it since I bought it. I rescued it out of a guy's backyard. It was leaned up against a fence covered up by a tarp. I've named it Hard Times because judging by the condition of it, that's all it's ever known. Let's do a walk around so we can get familiar with it and then I'll talk about the mechanical side of things. Starting at the front, it's got a brand new front tire which is great. It's flat though. <laughs> no reason to check if it holds air yet. We also have the smack over front fender. I don't know what that means but it doesn't sound very nice does it? No. This is a steering dampener. When you're going real fast this keeps the front end steady. Oh. So if you're going 80 miles an hour through the desert and you run into a javelina, oh. you don't get knocked off course. Or if your kickstand falls off and you run over it. An example of the maintenance history of this machine that I'm piecing together in my mind is that the kickstand got torn off savagely like a hungry caveman ripping off a big metal turkey leg and that's how it stayed. If you look over here at the frame you can still see the remains of the mounting bracket. Something like that. Why bother to replace it or even remove the wreckage? Run it! And keep it! <laughs> and keep it! Same with the headlight. That's a headlight? Well, it used to be. They stitched it back together, but then looks like it finally fell off. They kept it though. Passed it on to me. So moving along over here, 300cc two-stroke engine. I'm excited to ride it if we get it running. I've never ridden a 300cc two-stroke before. Plastics are all here, but they're in rough shape. There's scratches everywhere. On some motorcycles, like the one behind you, you might be able to see a scratch here or here. But on hard times, you have to look really closely to find a place that's not scratched. We've got a little duct tape transition bodywork here. This is really nice. They stepped up to the black. Blends right in. The subframe has had some damage that required welding to get back into shape. This supports the seat and rear fender. So if somebody came down really hard or a tree fell on the motorcycle, this would crumple. Don't know if that's what happened, but to break a subframe takes more than a sneeze. Haven't checked to see if the rims are straight, but I know what I'd put my money on. I do like the rounded shoulders. See that? Oh yeah. Never had that before on a motorcycle. This would be really easy to clean. Yeah. Not suggesting that anybody's ever cleaned this, but in the event, moving around to the other side here, it's more of the same. We've got the long range gas tank, which I don't really like because it makes me feel like I need to burp for some reason. It also fills in all the spaces in between. Might make it hard to access some things if we have to repair them. Or not. Don't want to meet trouble halfway. We almost had a nice exhaust pipe. Look at this. Shiny. Little to no rust. But not quite. Some people like their pasta al dente. This is el dente. Yeah, yeah, I could feel that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know the condition of the front forks. They smush up and down, which is good enough for the time being. And we've got wires going to nowhere. Just because the headlight falls off doesn't mean you need to get rid of the wires too. So do you have a flavor now for what we're dealing with? Yeah. Let's talk about the mechanical state of things as far as I can tell. Number one, it's a great sign that the motor turns over and has good compression. I 
also don't hear any crunchy, grindy bottom end noise. So I feel like there's a good chance the engine will run. There's a few reasons I haven't tried to start it yet. Mainly, I want to share it with you guys when I do, but also the angle of the Kickstarter, which should be directly sidewards to the motorcycle, is pushed back all the way to, what's that? Haywards. <laughs> yeah, Haywards. It was sidewards, now it's Haywards. Using this will be somewhere between dangerous and impossible. Another issue is that the oil has turned white. If oil looks milky, it means that it's contaminated with engine coolant. On a two-stroke, the only ways I know for that to happen are if the seal for the water pump shaft, which goes into the transmission, has failed, or if there's a leak in one of the internal coolant passages that carry water from the water pump assembly through the case and up into the head, where it can cool down the combustion chamber. On a two-stroke, a bad head gasket will not cause watery oil because the head gasket on this motorcycle doesn't separate engine oil and water. Just in case anybody was wondering. I was wondering exactly that. Seriously. So I've got a decision to make. Should we just try to start it and further mix up the yogurt sauce? <laughs> or drain the oil, replace it with new, and then try it. I really don't want to sacrifice oil, but I also don't feel like it's a good idea to further coat all the engine internals with that messy, goopy mix. I'm pretty impulsive. I'd just say go for it. If you can, have you seen how puny this is? Like, I didn't want to say anything about your Kickstarter, <laughs> but... That's small. Look at this one over here on this little... About the same size, isn't it? That one's more robust! Uh, uh, about the same. This does look like it belongs more on a 125 than a 300. <laughs> Could kickstart a bicycle, that's about it. <laughs> Come on, gas gas. <laughs> I say let's drain the Earl. Go for it. We'll see what it looks like and then put some fresh. By the looks of things under here, I think there's an oil leak. As a matter of fact, bring the camera to right here. See this drip? Oh. That looks green. Tastes green too. <laughs> Wonder if that's antifreeze. I hope it's not just a fancy creamy oil Ugh. might be anticipating a problem that doesn't exist. If it is a fancy creamy oil, that would be good, right? Yeah, I've never seen one before. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at what's look at what's draining out. Is that water? It looks like corn. <laughs> I promise. Oh. That's water, and there's the, whoa, and there's the oil. Yeah, that's not the fancy frappe oil. That is a beautiful mix of coolant and engine oil. Wow. I guess it's good you didn't start it. Whatever the cause of the leak, it's a big one. Yeah, glad we didn't start it. I wish I wasn't quite so close either. I have been splashed. You've been splashed. What a mess. Got the lens cleaned off? Think so. I've had a change of heart. I have never drained the transmission oil and had water come out. <laughs> so this must be a huge leak. I think we should take off at least the water pump cover, maybe even the clutch cover. Try to figure out what's going on. I'm if, really excited to see what's going on in there. If we put oil in it, it's going to immediately be contaminated with water again. Yeah. And that'll be a waste. You know what it reminds me of? Hmm. That motorcycle that we had that someone put oil in the coolant reservoir. I wonder if someone put coolant in the oil reservoir of this one. By mistake? <laughs> yeah. Well, I only see water coming out of here so far. And that suggests that 
the water is getting into the oil rather than the oil getting into the water. But that makes sense because the coolant system is pressurized as the engine is running. Okay, I've got this little cover undone and now we can access the water pump. The next thing I'll do is take off the impeller because the water pump seal lives right behind here and I want to have a look at it. Will it be obvious if it's bad? I don't know. Hmm. I hope the gear in there isn't plastic and I'm ruining it trying to remove this. I also hope that it's not opposite threads. <laughs> well, that came loose easy. Doubt I even broke anything. And there's the seal. I think. Don't know how it works. Or, or. Yeah, that's how they sound. I can't tell if that's good or bad. Well, what use are you, Mr. Mechanic? <laughs> I'll do some research and get back to you. I wasn't able to find any information about water pump seals for 2001 Gas Gas on the internet. I'm starting to think parts for this might be a problem. It's old, it's obscure, there's younger models out there now. I think we could get along. <laughs> but I thought of a way to test this water pump seal. I need to take apart the exhaust system though. See this little rubber coupler? Mm -hmm. I want that. <laughs> we'll get our first look at some of the covered up parts in a minute. You never know what you're going to find with these old machines. Ooh. Look at the air filter. Wow. <gasps> nice. They oil it? Feels like they did. Tacky. I would not have guessed somebody who didn't fix their kickstand or headlight when they fell off stayed on top of their air filter service. So they're redeemed a little bit. Got the muffler off along with the connector. I washed it off too because I need to put my mouth on it. Ugh. I've never tested a water pump seal this way. The idea just came to me. You know, I have to say, when you said you were going <laughs> to check to see if this worked or not. Yeah. Like, I feared you knew how to tell whether or not it worked. Like, by looking at it. Not performing mouth to mouth. I'm going to feel if there's any integrity in the seal. If I blow and air escapes past it, that means it needs to be replaced. Here we go. Are you fully pressurized? Feels all right. If there's not a bad seal here, that means there's a leak through one of these passages. It's possible for water to get into the transmission that way. But I don't see why that would happen. It's much more likely the pump seal would be bad because it's moving all the time. Mm -hmm could also be an issue with my testing method. Hmm. Seemed pretty scientific to me. Figure something out. I think I found the problem. Even though my test didn't reveal a bad water pump seal, I think what's going on is the bearing for the water pump shaft is bad, so it's loose, and that's causing the water pump seal to leak. Watch this, I'll thread the bolt in. There shouldn't be any side-to-side -side movement if the bearing is good. See that? Oh. It's not a lot, but for a bearing that's only three quarters of an inch big anyway, proportionally, it's substantial. So that means we need to remove the right side cover and replace a bearing. Take off the Kickstarter and the brake pedal. Brake pedal's so loose, I could just about swing it out of the way. I like the wacky Gas Gas logo. Yeah, it's a nice font. It's got a 90s feel to it. Imagine if it was fluorescent pink and orange. It'd tick all the boxes. Mm -hmm. Kickstarter's stuck. Oh, 
I'm sorry. Did you see that? It flinched when it saw the hammer. Can't blame it. Probably brought back some painful memories. <laughs> That's tight on there. Give it a little oil and let it sit. I've left the Kickstarter alone for a little while, removed the brake lever and this frame guard because it looked like it would get in the way. I also got a puller which should make removing the Kickstarter a lot easier. This isn't the perfect tool for the job, but it's a lot better than this. The Kickstarter shouldn't even be stuck on the shaft, but just as rust has developed on the outside of the motorcycle, I also think it's in there and that's what's tightening it up. So I'll try to get this on here. It's like those claw machines when you're a kid at the arcade. Have you done this before? <laughs> I said it wasn't the perfect tool. Will he get it this time? Uh. No. Everyone likes someone criticizing them as they do something ah. publicly. You lost another quarter. The reason it's not working is there's very little room behind the Kickstarter to get a grip. Hmm. But I'll try. Ha 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 ha! Oh, that feels good. See the little bit of rust? A little rusty in there. In the splines. So now, I just need to remove the bolts around the perimeter of this side cover and we can open it up. Just like the puller, this isn't the ideal tool for this job. It would be better to have a hex socket. You don't have any hex sockets? I might have this size. But if I do, it's in the shed. And I don't want to drive over there. Besides, I've got vice grips. Wonder if I've been too critical of old hard times. I think it's in rough shape, but it's 22 years old. Maybe it's in typical or even above average condition for a bike of its age. What do you guys think? What I like to know is what's that smell? Do you smell that? Smells like gear oil, a little bit. What's it smell like to you? I don't know. It smells like something from this machine. I know it's not me. I think we've probably vented the transmission. <laughs> and that's what you're smelling. It smells kind of like a ripe engine would smell to me. I think this engine is ripe. <laughs> <laughs> Last bolt. I think you made it through without dropping anything in that pan. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Felt it move. The left side is loose. I'll put a handle over here now to help it along. It's important that I pull this cover off straight or it'll get bound up. Ooh, no one wants that. That feels solid, like there's still a bolt holding it. You don't think it's any of these? Well, it could be, but I don't think so. I think those are all short. <laughs> this isn't going as smoothly as I envisioned. I've been working on this a while, haven't made much progress. The back side of this case is free, but over here, I can't get it loose. Probably the water pump shaft is stuck in one of the bearings. I'm going to do something that I didn't want to resort to, especially on camera, and that is introduce a friendly screwdriver between the cases. Mm. Not to pry, just to wedge. The risk of doing this is that 
it can damage the mating surfaces of these two cases, which need to be very smooth for the gasket to seal. It's like biting your Legos apart with your teeth. It lacks finesse. Something like that. I have it separated a little bit right here. Now if I push on the other side, leverage might help me. The oil looks so gross. Yeah, goopy gloppy. I think we've got a drooler. <laughs> I got it, but usually that method does get it. It's just a question of the damage it also causes. Are you ready to see the disaster? Yes. Not bad. Not bad. We've got some water oil emulsification down here, but otherwise it looks good, at first glance anyway. After pulling that plug and getting Niagara Falls, I thought it would be rusty and crusty in here. This is encouraging. The bearing we need to remove is behind this gear. So I'll bring this over to the workbench and we'll start taking it apart. Looks like I didn't do any damage with the screwdriver. Well, there's always next time. Right. With the cover off the motorcycle, now we can see the three places where water could possibly get into the transmission oil. The one that I suspect is the penetration of the water pump shaft from the transmission oil side to the water pump side. There's oil over here and water over here, so if the seal is bad, there can be intermixing. The other two places are these holes, which are passages that carry water from the pump into the cylinder and head. If the gasket right here fails, which is unlikely, water would escape into the oil, contaminate it, and create green gravy. Yuck. Next thing I'll do is thread this bolt into the water pump shaft and tap it out. Whoa, that is, that's loose. I think I might be onto something with the bearing. Come on, there. If any bearing experts are watching, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how much play a bearing like this should have. Yep. <laughs> you can't just make things easy for me. Longer bolt, you say? So firstly, I don't think I need to buy a new water pump shaft. I really should have looked at this for more than a few seconds before deciding it was in good shape. At the end of the shaft, it's rusty and pitted. This is a problem because it's right where the seal fits on there. The rougher this is, the more likely the seal will leak. I don't know if this was the source of a leak, but it's not optimal. so. I'll get a new shaft and eliminate the possibility. I also am going to buy another gear because this one has a few teeth that look like they have some significant damage. Let's remove the bearing. This is similar to taking out the shaft. We use the hammer and punch method. There it is. Got some sludge on it. Yeah. Feels a little bit crunchy. I can hear that. Well, I'm trying to move it to the microphone, but you keep filming what I'm doing. Well, you didn't tell me that you were trying to capture the sound. I don't know. I think the bearing's bad. I hope the bearing's bad, but that might just be me looking at the thing through wishful thinking colored glasses. Either way, I'll buy a new bearing. The last thing we need to remove from here, besides the slime, 
is the water pump shaft seal. I don't know if it comes out this way or yay way. You don't need to take out that one? No, that is for the power valve actuator governor. Mm. Governor. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we have a snap ring situation in there. Snap ring pliers are in the shed. So I'll try to just use a couple screws. What you see me doing right here was a bad idea. But that's what makes this entertaining. Deck screws are made of hard metal and have sharp threads that can easily cut into aluminum. I don't think these scratches are deep enough to prevent the gasket from working and allow water into the transmission, but irony is a powerful force. Eh. Think it'll be all right? If it's not, deal with it then. Snap ring out. Seal out. I've recently learned that this is called a mechanical seal. Never seen one before working on this motorcycle. I haven't seen a robotic otter before either. I'm familiar with these. This is a lip seal. Ooh. One piece of rubber that the shaft fits through. The way this works is one piece goes onto the moving shaft, the other one fits into the stationary case, and the seal happens between these two very flat surfaces. See how that works? Okay. And how a worn out bearing could mess it up? Ooh, yeah, that's no good. So I'll buy a new seal because even though I don't know that this one is bad, it is a wear item. Brings our total invoice to New water pump shaft, new water pump gear, new water pump seal, and bearing. I'm not going to replace the impeller, but I noticed when I looked at it, it has scratches on some of the blades. See that? Mm-hmm. This doesn't affect functionality, but it is evidence. Valuable evidence! Oh, yeah. That the impeller has contacted the case. The only reason it would do that is if the bearing was faulty. Gives credence to my theory. Well, go buy some stuff. Let's fix her up. What are you waiting for? You're just standing there. I got everything on my order ticket. It was easier than I feared. Oh, Mr. Complaining, parts are hard to find. Guess not. Well, unlike getting parts for a Honda, where you have hundreds of online retailers, for old gas gas machines, like Hard Times, I was able to find one. And that's because recently the company Gas Gas has changed hands. Mm. Which is not a good sign as far as legacy product support. I think we should assemble this the opposite of how we took it apart. So professionally? What I mean is, the first thing to do is install the case portion of the water pump seal. How about we compare it to the old one, even though comparisons are odorous. I see a difference. Yeah. This one has more material. Maybe the water pump seal is the problem. I don't care what the problem is, as long as it's solved by the things in this box. How much were those? $37. Not bad. Yeah, reasonable. I've got it cleaned out here where the seal goes. Might be able to just push it in by hand. Ooh. Yeah. Oh no! It fell out. That's my precision ceramic disc. It was kind of funny. Yeah, there's value in that. Sort of reminds me of a breast mint. I think it would make me minty fresh. Well, maybe I ruined it. Maybe I didn't. 
I put the seal back together and I'm pretty sure I didn't break it. I have a new plan of action as well. Instead of pushing this in from over here, I think it would be better if we backed it in from the front. So the fresh breath side will be facing up and gravity won't be working against us. But to do it this new way, rather than putting the seal in first, I'll reinstall the snap ring and the bearing. Because we need to pound the bearing in from over here, and if we put the seal in first, it could very well tinkle out again as we were trying to get the bearing in there. All right. Got the snap ring pliers for this. Correct tool for the job. These are, sh these are crummy snap ring pliers. Too flexible. Floppy. See a spark? Yes. Okay, try this again. Nice and easy. I realized after it was too late to make a difference, I didn't need to remove this snap ring. Kind of embarrassing. There. I think I got it. That was an ordeal. Does it look like it's in there? From your point of view? Yeah, sometimes hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's put the bearing in now. I cleaned off a lot of the yuck that was in here when you weren't looking. There you go. Not messing around. There's the new bearing. I'll push it in with a 19 millimeter socket. It's important to put pressure only on this outer rim because if I pushed here, it could damage the balls or the races. Didn't care about the one I took out because it was going to be discarded anyway. I also cleaned the inside of this socket. Oh, okay. If I hadn't, however many years old it is worth of grime would be instantly transferred to the sensitive ball bearing with the first whack of the hammer. So I'll drive the bearing into place now. This is pretty simple. My main concern is making sure it goes in straight. Okay, it's over halfway in now, so there's not much risk of it going crooked. About right now is when I realize that I put it in backwards. Typically. I think I'm okay though. And if the bearing is seated completely, it'll be pushed up against the snap ring over here. Looks good to me. Yeah. Now, let's see if we can put the seal in here. I'm nervous doing this because I don't know how fragile it is. Should have tested with the previous one. Broke it on purpose. Yeah. Then I'd know what I was working with. Yeah! I think that's it. It's not on the ground. Yeah, don't dump it out now. That feels like a victory. What next? I will put together my new shaft and gear assembly. Okay, I got this made up. We have a nice smooth shaft here where it counts and fresh gear. I'm almost ready to install this in the case but before I do I think I ought to clean off this sealing surface with some rubbing alcohol because any dirt on here could scratch it and make it leak. You just blew a bunch of dirt on it now. <laughs> Better do it again. <laughs> Look all right to you? Yes. Could have done that with the shaft in place, but it'd be more difficult this way. Now we can install the other half of the seal. I don't know if it's all right to just install it dry, but seems like a little bit of pre-lubrication would be better. It's all right if I dip this in your water here? Yeah, I'm now done with that. I'll put this on here now. It 
It's really springy. It doesn't want to stay on the shaft. So, I'll just install the impeller on top of it. And that'll push it down where it goes. Okay, everything I wanted to do here is done. I think we can step over to the motorcycle. All right. I removed the old gasket from the motor, put a new one on here. I didn't have to order this because when I bought Hard Times, it came with many gaskets. <laughs> what were they planning to I do? I don't want to speculate about why they had a full engine rebuild's worth of gaskets. We also got a lot of other extras. I like that FMF thing. Yeah, new muffler. If we install this on the motorcycle, it might double its value. <laughs> We're going to leave it in the bag for now though. A lot of this is garbage. Broken headlight enclosure, worn out hand guards that don't even match each other. But there's some treasures too. This looks like a bag full of smalls. This looks like a bag full of trash. Well, Are any of the spark plugs good? I don't know, there's at least five or ten of them in there. The rubbers. Very sophisticated electrical equipment. Here's a baggie. What's in here? I don't think it's motorcycle parts. Ew, put that down. Oh, this don't look new. No. It smells like a cat was in here. Oh, oh, it's just gonna say don't smell it. <laughs> I digress. Let's put the cover back on the motorcycle. Oh. Careful there. I don't wanna scratch that hand guard. <laughs> this can be a little bit fiddly because of the shafts that need to line up with various bearings. And these two gears mesh. This is different than Alaskan dog sleds or orphanage food. That's mush. You know me well. <laughs> Quick! So with just the right wiggle, wow! That was easy. Well, bolt it on there before it falls off. Hard Times engine is put back together. Now we'll fill it up with oil because I don't want to forget. Gas Gas isn't scoring any points with me for their oil filler design. You need a tool just to take the plug out. And look how tiny that hole is. My smallest funnel won't even fit in there. And here on the farm, we buy oil by the gallon jug, if not the bucket. It's bouquet! <laughs> so I'll fill up from over here how about you go look at the sight glass on the other side? I kind of feel like you're going to spill, so I wanted to watch. I think if we get more than half of what goes in the funnel into the motorcycle, we'll be doing good. Okay. I'll watch this and tell you how full it's getting. I plan for this oil to be sacrificial. Even if the water pump seal doesn't leak, the new oil will probably get fouled up by what remains of the old. The oil level hasn't changed. Well, it's a tiny little hole I'm pouring into. This might take a while. We'll get back to you guys. You haven't spilled yet. We've got the correct oil level in the transmission. I also filled up the radiators with water. I hope and I believe we are done with internal engine repairs so we can move on to the next issue which is the Kickstarter. Since we started working on the motorcycle, this has been a background process, and I think I have figured out a workable solution. The problem here is that over time, this area of the Kickstarter, made of aluminum, has been deformed from impaction against the harder steel part. Poor design. Poor design, abuse, typical use, I don't know. This is the remedy I came up with. It's a washer that I turned into a very specialized washer. It has a couple arms. 
to keep it in place and most importantly a little upward protuberance that fits between the stationary and pivoting part of the kickstarter to shim it out where it belongs. I think that's pretty clever. Thanks. I don't know if it will work for one kick or 100 kicks, but it's temporary and I hope it lasts long enough to see if Hard Times runs and if it runs well enough to justify a new Kickstarter. I think that'll work. I'll put the muffler on now and then we'll see if it starts. I know very little about this motorcycle because the person I got it from only had it for a short amount of time. I don't think he even rode it. He either got it as a trade for some carpentry work or maybe his friend was moving to a different state and gave it to him. Doesn't really matter though because engines don't run on Providence, do they? No. Did he say if it ran? He said he thought it ran, but it needed a clutch. But mm -hmm. I didn't believe him because he didn't even notice that the oil was white. I questioned the man's mechanical aptitude. So, I think it's going to run and it's going to need a clutch. Yeah. I believe anyone. Something curious about hard times is that it looks like it's been sitting for a while. It's got rust all over it. But if you come over here and smell the gas, oh, give it a sniff. Oh, it hasn't gone completely flat. Still a little bit of pop in there. Zoom in so they can smell too. Yeah, you guys getting that? So I'm hoping I'm wishing that I can turn the gas on, pull the choke, and it'll start. Okay, first problem is that when I turn the gas on, gas is leaking from this fuel line. Looks like it's completely rotten. That's squishy. Squishy, very squishy. Spongy. I don't want all my gas to drain out. Have you priced gas lately? Better fix it. Almost started it. Okay, I robbed a piece of fuel line from the pit bike, spliced it in here, the gas is on, and we still have a little bit of a leak on the underside of the fuel filter, but that don't befront me. I wonder if the float valve is letting fuel into the carburetor. I don't even want to attempt starting this unless I feel like there's a good chance it will start because I only have a limited number of kicks before the starter breaks again. So an easy way to tell if gas is getting into the float bowl is tipping the motorcycle over and seeing if it leaks out the overflow tube. Let me know if you see anything. If nothing leaks out, with the motorcycle tipped yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, it's leaking. Yeah? Yeah. That's good enough for me. Good enough for you? Yeah. <clears throat> First time I've swung a leg over this thing, you might want to get over Other side? On, on the Kickstarter side. Yeah, in case it breaks. Yeah. Maybe should have worn more durable shoes. <laughs> I also might just be stalling right now. Oh. Did it break? Look at it. Oh no. It's gone haywards again. It's already at two o'clock. Well, it's more like seven seven thirty to me. Well, you're in a different time zone. <laughs> so my Kickstarter fix lasted zero kicks. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I was excited. Just kick it. How many times have they kicked it like that? Easy for you to say. It's not your foot. Aww. This is a 300. I'm hardly getting any revolution on the engine when I do this. Ooh. A little bit, though. 
Come on, sweetheart. Maybe you should modify it some more. Your face is the color of exertion. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let's take out the spark plug. See what it looks like. And if it sparks. This marshmallow gas tank is in the way. Just like I feared it might be. Spark plug wasn't even tight. Oh, so someone's been messing with it. That's what it suggests. You know what to do and where to look. Ready? Let me focus. Yeah, go. Oh yeah, it's sparking. Well, that's a good thing. The carburetor is probably plugged up and fuel isn't getting into the engine. Thought I might be able to get away with not cleaning the carburetor on this thing. I was wrong. Let's see if gas gas did me a favor and made it easy to remove the carburetor. Ooh, that gas is pretty brown. I turned the gas off. Does the valve not work? I don't think the valve works. The valve is fine. I had it on reserve instead of off. Originally, I thought the gas was darker than normal because of whatever oil was mixed with it. Now that I've smelled it some more, and seen it out in the open, I think it's that color because of how old it is, which means it's very expired. So I'll drain the tank and put some fresh fuel in there after we clean the carburetor. If I can get the carburetor off. Bear down on it. Show it who the boss is. Don't let that smack over smack you around. This is a tough one. It's not Gas Gas's fault though. This rubber has just turned very stiff. Might almost have it though. Another way to remove the carburetor would be to take off the seat and subframe so the airbox is completely out of the way. But I thought this would be easier. Arrgh. I feel like I'm having a baby. Hooray! It's a little girl. Hard times. Didn't want to give up its carburetor. Probably scared of being parted out. I'll wash this off using some of the old gas and then we'll take it apart. There was a nice looking carburetor under the dirt, grime, and sand. I'm keeping all that gas for cleaning solvent. Save some money that way. Oh, yeah. Now we'll open up the oyster. Uh oh. This could be a problem. Talk to me. Looks really clean in here so far. The other uh oh is for some reason I can't take this off. There. So I'm telling you, before you even tell them what's going on, I have a bad feeling about this motorcycle. I don't think cleaning the carburetor is gonna help. I Ooh. don't think it's gonna start. Ooh. It came over me while I was eating lunch today. Your motorcycle divining sense was speaking to you? It was. I hope you're wrong, but I don't doubt you. You think there's something serious wrong with the engine. They didn't just park this for no reason. I think something's going on. I have no idea what it could be, though. We'll see. Oftentimes, a no-start condition after the motorcycle hasn't been used in a long time is the result of a clogged pilot jet. This is what gasoline flows through from the float bowl into the motor 
at startup and low engine speeds. It's also a very tiny hole, which makes it susceptible to getting plugged. It looks plugged, but that could just be a little bit of fuel in there. Not plugged. Might even be able to see through it. Yep. This carburetor looks fine. It's pretty much spotless. Really doubt this is the problem. But since I've got it taken apart here, I'll really quickly blow out all the usual orifices with compressed air, then put it back together, see what happens. Maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah. Got the carburetor back on. I blew out the internal passages and didn't notice any signs of obstruction. I also drained out the old gas, replaced it with some fresh. We'll see if it starts. If it does, I don't know if it's because I cleaned out a minuscule amount of garbage from the carburetor or if it was just bad gas, which would be embarrassing. But either way, it'll be a win. Gas is on. Choke is on. Are you on? I'm on. Did you hear it run? It ran. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds nice too. I didn't think it even start. No. You thought it was doomed. I well. Still might be. I guess. <laughs> It has some kind of an issue. Usually when a clutch is bad, it slips. This one doesn't let go. So it clutches. <laughs> First ride <laughs> wasn't quite a success. That does not count as a first ride. Need to break that clutch free somehow. Maybe. Your shorts are looking pretty sporty. Look at all that leg. <laughs> They live up to their name. <laughs> so I'll put it in high gear. I don't know if that's fifth or sixth. It might be a six speed transmission. So if I put it in high gear and rock it back and forth, that might loosen up the clutch. I couldn't make the clutch work, so we'll take it apart, try to figure out what's wrong. Blew my mind when that started. Me too. I'm glad you got out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Maybe should have listened to old John when he said it needed a new clutch. Yeah, sometimes the seller isn't totally honest or knowledgeable though. Yeah. Same with buyers. Oh, don't sell yourself short. You're very honest. <laughs> okay, bolts and springs are out. I hope I can tell if there's something wrong. I'll take this off. Looks good so far. I can see the first fiber disc. This is what grabs around the outer drum, which is attached to the engine. And this inner drum is attached to the transmission. Whoa. Whoa. 
there's the steel plate and there is a consequence to leaving water in the transmission. The clutch gets rusty. That's supposed to be bare metal. Shiny. Yikes. You noticed? Oh yeah. That's not right. <laughs> I don't think that would have loosened. Maybe not. I didn't expect the problem to be rusted together clutch plates. Oh, that was stuck. This clutch was locked up solid. Do you see how the steel ones grab the inner part and the fiber ones grab the outer part? Yeah. And when they squish together, they grab each other. I wonder if these can be saved. They don't even go to church. Heavens! I got the clutch out of the motorcycle. The fiber discs are in good shape. There's still plenty of material left, but all of the steels are rusty on both sides. I could put it back together like this, but the clutch engagement would probably be very jerky and unpredictable. I don't want to ride a motorcycle like that, but I also don't want to spend $200 on a new clutch. So I've decided to compromise by cleaning these up the best that I can with steel wool. I've already done one of them and I like the way it came out. The rust almost completely disappeared and most importantly, it's smooth. Ooh! So I think if I do the same thing to all the metal plates, clean everything up, put it back together, it'll work. You can watch me rub or you can swoop to it being ready to start up again. Got the clutch put back together, also installed the rear brake pedal and right side cover because I think we are close to taking hard times for a ride. The goal for this test is to start up the engine, pull the clutch, and put the transmission in gear without the motorcycle moving. You remember what happened last time? Yes. How many kicks? Two. How about you? One. with the way this turned out. I'll ask you guys right now, would you have taken the same course I did in replacing the water pump seal and the bearing without starting the engine first, seeing if it runs, and directly witnessing coolant going from the cooling system to the transmission? I went with what I thought was the most likely scenario. But just like Camera Girl said, maybe somebody in a drunken stupor put water in the transmission. <laughs> or maybe they used it as a boat anchor one time. I don't know. Let's see if we lost any coolant. This will tell us whether or not the new water pump seal is leaking. Still full. Well, I can't see, but... You can trust me. Just trust me. All right. Me. <laughs> I'll trust you. I'll take your word for it. That's what I want to believe when I go to bed tonight. In the next video, we'll take hard times for a ride. And as soon as that's published, I'll put a link to it up on the screen. And if you're interested in seeing the motorcycle we were talking about earlier, which had oil in the coolant overflow tank, I'll put a link to that up there as well. Will you ride it? This?
Yeah. I don't know. How about if I make sure the tires hold air? <laughs> it's very noble of you. I won't ask you to answer right now. Thanks for watching.